Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. My name's Gavin, um, or Shapiro500 on Instagram, and uh, I'm going to show you how to break up the fall off of your effectors. So they look really nice, like this. So this is kind of the, the goal. This is what we're looking for. If you want to just cut to the chase, skip to here in the tutorial. But for now, I'm going to explain a little backstory. So this used to be really easy in uh, R19 and below. You used to do a thing called weight transform. You'd, you'd like put an effector on a random effector, or a shader effector or something, and then you'd modify the weight transform. And then when you put other effectors on it, it would break up the edges of your fall off. And it looked really nice. And I couldn't figure out how to do this in R20 and above because they put fields in. And if you look up how to do this online, uh, they show you a method that isn't really the right way to do it, which is the overlay method. So I'm going to show you that first to show you why it's different and why you shouldn't do it. Or if you do do it, it just won't look as good as your stuff could. Okay, so let's make a matrix. Um, and then I'll click on it. Make a plane. And then in the plane effector, make a linear field. So this field is going to show how the effector gets applied to the matrix. So what everyone seems to think online is that if you add a random field and add an overlay, it breaks it up. And it does break it up, but it doesn't really break up the edges. Uh, and this is why I don't like this method, because you, know, you can drag your linear field through it, but each of these rows of cubes comes up kind of all at the same time. So it's not really breaking up the edges of your effector. Um, and this doesn't look as good as it could. So the way that I learned to do this, uh, to make it look a little better, set your random field to add. And then uh, in your linear field, unclamp the min and the max. And now when you move your linear field through it, it breaks up the edge. And as you can see, this just looks a lot nicer than the other method looks more natural. You can get some cool effects out of this. I've used this kind of stuff in my work. Like in this one with the puffins, the, the columns are all coming up and they're broken up really nice and natural. And uh, that wouldn't really be possible with the overlay method. So this is a way to do that. So for, for uh, just a little bit more control, what you can do is in this plane, you can, um, you could add a, blah, 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 where is it? A curve. So, if you throw a curve on here, now, um, however you modify this curve here is how your your cubes are going to get affected here, or your objects inside of your, your cloner, or, or whatever you, you, you put this effector on. And this uh, looks really nice, and you get a ton of control over this. So you, in the random field, like, if you bring this scale up a bunch, now you get these cool, like, wavy patterns, uh, and then you, you drag your field through, and it just looks pretty sweet. Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Another interesting thing you can do with the curve um, modifier is that you can draw out a curve for exactly how you want each object to move. So in this, I have it so each cube is sort of dipping down and then jumping up and then bouncing as it lands. And you can see how that carries over here. So you can get some really interesting effects. Make sure if you if you draw a curve that has stuff going below or above the limits that you click on this, which unclamps uh, the values for when they go too high or low. You'll see this is the default where it doesn't allow stuff to go above or below. So it just gets kind of messed up here. But just unclamp that. And then uh, you'll get this effect. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.